Larry Weedage has been licensed by the Texas Real Estate as a professional real estate inspector since 2002. Member of the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors on the staff of San Antonio College as a certified home inspector, inspection instructor. He was also born and raised right here in San Antonio. He has a brother you might have seen on the news because he was in the fire department and we interviewed lots of people about fires. Larry has more than 45 years of experience in building, repairing, remodeling homes, and that combined with completion of the Home Inspector Curriculum at San Antonio College, licensing by the Texas Real Estate Commission, and completion of hundreds of hours of home inspection, continuing education, and it is going to tell you everything there is to know tonight about what he does. Please give it up for Larry. Before I get started, I just want to let you know that I'm a home inspector and not a speaker. And in about 400 seconds, I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> to paraphrase Crosby, Stills, and Nash at Woodstock, this is my first gig. <laughs> about 13 years ago, my brother-in-law, who's a real estate broker, and I were looking at a house that needed some repairs. Home inspector was there doing his thing, and my brother-in-law suggested that I should become a home inspector. He said all it takes is a flashlight, a screwdriver, a little electrical inspection thingy, and you can do six or eight inspections a day for $200 each. I thought, man, this is great. Well, after four months of training at San Antonio College and the purchase of about $2,000 worth of tools, I was ready to take on the world. Here are a few of about $7,000 worth of tools that I carry now, and I only do one inspection a day. <laughs> First, I do some research. Then there's the driving time. Inspection takes about three and a half hours. More driving time. Another two to three hours are spent writing the report. So you can see six or eight inspections a day is totally out of the question. Besides, I only want one inspection floating around in my mind at one time. It is the best job I've ever had. Inspectors go to a different location every day. Uh, they get to meet some really nice people and they get to see some really great houses and they provide a valuable service. It's a very rewarding job, plus it pays a bit too. What is a home inspection? It's a report on the components and conditions that are present, visible, and accessible at the time of inspection. Inspectors do not have x-ray vision. They cannot see what's readily not available, not visible. And we don't have crystal balls and we cannot predict the future performance of the house or its systems. An inspector gets to see some odd things, like this furnace burner with a mind of its own. And we get to see the newest innovations, like the Venda Hood operated cabinet doors. You just never know what you're going to find. Occasionally, we get to see something unique from the past. This hand built electrical panel was in an old home in King William, built in 1926. It's on a marble slab behind glass doors. It has copper straps, brass cartridge fuse holders. They even fuse the neutrals, which is actually quite dangerous. Some things we come across are a bit spooky and some just a bit weird. It's not unusual to find an animal skeleton or dried carcass in the crawl space, but that jar I found in that one kitchen, it was just plain creepy. At this inspection, I saw some yellow jackets flying around the garage door, and they looked kind of agitated, so I went over to take a look, and this is what I found. Fire ants had crawled to the top of the door opening and had taken over the wasp nest. If you look close, you can see they actually killed at least two yellow jackets. Sometimes we come across little friends, a fox squirrel, Texas spiny lizard, a black and yellow garden spider, and what might be a two-suck moth, I wish I knew for sure. And something I've learned is that there's no better karate instructor than a spider web in your face. <laughs> An inspector will never pass or fail a house. They only report on the conditions present. And boy, there's some conditions. Here you can see a damaged roof, failing foundation, a plant growing out of a garden, uh, gutter downspout, 
And in the lower left hand, right hand corner, something I come across many times is undisclosed fire damage in the attic. About 90% of the roofs that I inspect are not installed properly. I see missing nails, overdriven nails, improperly placed nails. I see worn roofs and deteriorated roof jacks and flashings. The picture in the middle is a bullet that I extracted from one roof. It's not the first one, it probably won't be the last one either. <laughs> On this roof, the nails were placed wrong and the wind caught part of the roof covering and flipped it up and over. I was asked to go back on the day of closing and re-inspect it. It looked fine from the street, but when I climbed up on it, uh, I found that all they did to fix the damage was to flip the roofing back over. They didn't even bother to nail it. <laughs> I never could figure out how hay and cow patties got on this one roof. <laughs> and sometimes things aren't what they appear to be, which should have been an eight by 16 vent uh, was actually just a couple of holes. <laughs> Often I will find clogged clothes dryer vents that can lead to fires. And occasionally I'll find them just vented to the attic. In 2010, there were 15,000 home structure fires involving clothes dryers that resulted in 51 deaths. 32% of those fires were attributed to lint buildup. Infrared thermography is the latest technology to be used by inspectors. Thermal imaging can find moisture intrusion. In the lower photo, there was a small leak in the bathroom plumbing inside the wall. Nothing was visible to the naked eye, but the infrared camera caught it. Air infiltration can also be detected with thermal imaging. The outside temperature on this day was right at about freezing. We turned on the bathroom exhaust fans, the clothes dryer, and the rain should to create a negative pressure in the house. And you can see where the cold air is entering at the kitchen counter receptacle and around the trim at the door. Here you can see how thermal imaging can be used to find missing or loose insulation. In the lower right photo, you can see an inset with a picture of the back side of the wall showing that there is no insulation behind the shower. It makes for a very cold shower in the winter. And then occasionally, I'm stumped. I was a bit puzzled here. I didn't know whether to comment that access to the electrical panel was blocked by personal property, <laughs> or that electrical panels shouldn't be used to store flammable objects. <laughs> I'm not a roach inspector. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to just sit on the roof and take in the view. Thank you for not walking out on me. Thank you. That's fascinating. Where is that house, by the way? Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know where to start with this. this I think it'll be a great reality show. What do you think? Uh, Let's do it. I, I mean, it is one of those things. Well, first of all, does the construction industry here just suck? Or is it, uh, are that many houses built that badly that we would be embarrassed to go home to? I had to go through 23,000 photos to pull these out, so most oh. of the photos are not that bad. Oh, okay, all right. How many dead things do you find, like kitty jars? And... I don't keep track of it. Really? <laughs> was that, oh, maybe I was gonna ask you about the cat, but I don't think I'll do that now. Um, infrared, do you use a lot of infrared now? Because I don't think every, I've had every that. Every house, I do an infrared scan on it. Is that a little weird? No. I don't know. No, it just seems, no, it seems a little weird. No, not an ultraviolet light. Okay. Infrared. And how many people have offered you, like, oh, maybe, Larry, how about a hundred bucks to forget about the little dead kitty jar? <laughs> I've, I've never had anyone try to buy me off. Really? Yeah. Really? That's awesome. Well, and now, the weirdest thing you've seen, is it like the kitty jar, or can you talk that, about it? That ranks right up there. Okay, all right, well, I won't go any further then. Please give it up, Larry Wee!